So now that the lengthwise wall is out of the shop, the long load bearing wall, it's time for me to focus on the front wall and then the back wall. And I got to looking at the bracing that I have in there at the moment on my temporary support wall and all my bracing runs lengthwise of the shop. I didn't have any uh, that run widthwise. You'll see in a minute. I just decided to pull some boards out of a pile that I had behind the shop, make some temporary supports that I can put up here, and if nothing else, you know, it just made me feel better to install some more supports before I start pulling out, uh, you know, any more block out of this building. So even though these little braces are short, I'm putting in a whole lot of them. Every load bearing post on this temporary wall will have one. And like I said, just a little extra security for me because up to this point I didn't have anything to keep this building from wanting to tilt widthwise. Everything I had was, you know, focused on its stability lengthwise. These look like large oak boards, and they're two inches by seven and a half, so they must have had those sawn, uh, I'm not for sure, but those are pretty nice. Run all the way around the building. So I was really glad to get this ladder, especially for this project where I'm on uneven ground. You can see right now the front and the back are sitting on two different planes and makes the ladder unstable. But with the design of the front legs up here, you can adjust them independently and then make you know, the ladder much more stable, which is nice. Not to mention this thing kept me off the wall uh, and allowed me to get right up next to it. So this was, this was a good buy for sure. Even though they're a little pricey, I think they're worth the money, if you do anything sketchy anyway.
So this front wall was giving me a hard time getting it apart, really. The whole corner to the well that I'm working on right here was full of mortar. I think that's pretty common that they do on the ends at least. And it was definitely done on this one, which made it hard to get this thing apart. So I just decided that I'd had enough t enough fun playing with the air hammer up on the ladder and that I was going to go about this a little differently. So I decided I'd get to come along and uh, try to pull this thing down. So there's a mouse nest, that's what it looks like anyway. Same thing that builds in your air filter housings of your cars that sit around or like in your glove boxes. It's really common for mice to build under the air covers, the air shroud on small engines, lawn mowers, riding, you know, riding lawn mowers, snow blowers, stuff like that. And this stuff will pack in there where they're air cooled engines and overheat your engine if, you're, if you don't look for that. So I've seen that I don't know how many times. Small engines get ruined because of a mouse. This must have been the row that they done at lunch. guys were getting serious when they built this wall, this front one. A pack of Vantage cigarettes. It's an old pack, a bottle of A&W root beer, and there's like two or three more cans in there that I got out of the wall. So, you know, they were serious when they were building this one. Peanuts that squirrel, please. In fact, I'm sure she's that squirrel, please.
spring is definitely here. All the bushes and stuff on the creek banks and roadsides are starting to get little buds on them. My weeping willow is also getting some buds on it. And that's exciting for me. And I'm noticing all the little birds are flying around with leaves and twigs and stuff in their beaks. I guess they're wanting to build some nests and start a family for the springtime. And when I opened the shop doors this morning, two little brown birds flew out in a hurry. And I got to looking around, wondering what they were really doing in here. And I got to noticing that in this cardboard box is a bunch of leaves and twigs and moss, which I did not put in that box. So obviously those little birds are wanting to build a nest there. How wise of a place that is, I don't know. But we'll watch them. We'll see. Maybe uh, it'll be something interesting to, to watch unfold. A family of birds. I'm not sure on the type of bird. We'll have to get a good look at them. But maybe we'll have a nest of baby birds to watch. So I want to get started removing this back section of the wall. And you can see that stair step crack there. Then there's a crack that runs right up through the center of this block all the way up to this stair step crack here and then no support here. So basically this whole section of the wall is just kind of hanging out there. So I've got to get some sort of support here. Let me show you what I've come up with and we'll get started removing a few of these blocks up high to get some of the weight off of it. So in this gap here between this block I'm going to be using this piece of 4x4 that I cut long ways. Just use the scale saw. I cut it from one side and then the other. Just at a sharp angle there where it'll act as a wedge. Kind of a self-locking uh, wedge. So I'm just going to put this in this gap here. And then take a hammer and drive that in until it's got quite a bit of tension on it. And that should, at least, if nothing else, it'll give me a false sense of security that this may stay where it's at until I can get some of the weight off of it. should hold itself. So there's a fail from Harbor Freight. I just put this on last week, I think. Diablo half-inch hose. Tried not to abuse it. I haven't dropped anything on it, and I'm running it about 150 PSI, 160, so maybe right around half or slightly above its designed rating. It says do not exceed, yeah, do not exceed 300 pounds. So there's a fail from Harbor Freight. So I'd stay away from those until they up their game a bit. That's pretty disappointing, actually. So it's back to the Goodyear hose. I believe that's a Goodyear anyway. It's probably 15 years old, and the only problems that this hose has ever given me is problems that I've caused by dropping stuff on it. So that's a big fail on that uh, Diablo hose. So this company, Evolution, contacted me the other day. They said, we want to send you a saw. I've seen other creators use this same saw, but I never gave it a lot of attention. I'm not a fan of chop saws by any, any stretch. They're one of my least favorite tools. But this one is doesn't cut with an abrasive action. It's not an abrasive chop saw, let's say that. I, have, I don't even know what to expect when I open this box. I've never seen one of these in person, so I'll be curious to see how its construction 
you know stacks up to normal chop saws that I've experienced in the past which are horrible uh, lots of heat lots of sparks and lots of noise so let's get this out of the box get a look at it and see uh, see what it's all about might come in handy for that rebar so first impressions this thing out of the box is it's pretty heavy actually heavily built it seems it's got some weight to it and it appears to be like most chop saws that I've seen in construction anyway other than I'm pretty sure that most of the ones that I've seen the bases are made of stamped sheet metal where this one is cast aluminum it also has a uh, what appears to be a metal strip right here where the vise slides back and forth I'm assuming that's for durability reasons the fixed or the movable jaw here is cast iron uh, and looks to be about twice as big as it probably needs to be acme thread with a quick adjusting mechanism which is pretty common on most chop saws that i've seen the fixed jaw looks to be cast iron as well i don't know if that's aluminum or plastic this one is cast aluminum this handle here so this one probably is as well just loosen that and it's got a spring plunger on the back so you can miter the fixed jaw for I guess setting it quickly so that's pretty handy I guess. it looks like it has a couple other positions where you can move this jaw for, for some reason uh, factory B block for the movable jaw which is nice and it slides up and down on the movable jaw to I guess accommodate different size damage of stock uh, the arm here with the gearbox, all cast aluminum, nice heavy spring seems to be. And then the motor housing here where the brushes are is some sort of glass fiber reinforced plastic along with the, the handle up here. So, not, not bad actually as far as its construction. It also has a chip pan that is removable. If the blade's up. So you can clean out the, the chips that it generates. So let's get this thing plugged in. That's really what matters, how it cuts. I'm curious to see how it performs. So it comes with a two conductor, 14 gauge, 10 foot long cord, which is nice. And it's pretty cold out here. It's actually fairly flexible. It says it pulls 15 amps supplied with a 14 inch blade but can take a 15 inch blade maximum so this is a 14 inch uh, made in japan blade so see how this thing actually cuts so it looks like three quarter ten threaded rod they sent several items they sent this which is three eighths by five inch looks like some four inch by quarter inch angle iron some four inch by quarter inch pipe and then some square so there's three quarter ten you got the b block in there I'll try that looks about three quarter looks about the as small as this little v will handle it's definitely loud but you can see the blade runs much slower than an abrasive saw. Man, that's nice. That cut through that no problem. Let's try that again. impressed with that there's actually no heat in that at all huh let's try something different let's try that 3 8 thick 5 inches long or wide
that's faster than you're going to cut through that with a, a little heat in that, but not too bad. That's faster than you're going to cut through that with about anything else, maybe a bandsaw. A little chatter. I am surprised. Try something else. So this is some number five, I believe, solid steel rebar, which is definitely harder than mild steel in my experience anyway. So let's try that out and see how it does, because this will probably be what I use this thing the most for in the near future. So that done really well. Some sparks, but yeah. Probably ought to unplug it. Yeah. Didn't seem to hurt the blade. So my impressions after using this thing, you know, I cut quite a few cuts with it. You know, we don't have any long-term experience on this machine, so I can't speak to its long-term you know, durability, but it's surprisingly good to this point. And it walked through that stuff without any problems at all. Um, all my experience is on an abrasive saw, so comparing the two, uh, this one's definitely better. You know, it still generates a lot of hot chips you wouldn't want to get down your shirt, but I don't think it's going to catch your shop on fire. Mm. Ear protection, eye protection, obviously still required with this thing. And I've been looking over it, trying to find flaws with it. I don't want to just say good things about it. If there's something bad with it, I want to say that too, but... You know, other than some fit and finish issues, you know, nothing glaringly obviously wrong with it. So I'm a bit impressed, I'll have to say. You know, if anything comes up in the future problem-wise, we'll obviously point it out, but you know, I'm happy to have one in the shop. And if I had a lot of general fab work to do, where I was cutting a lot of stock to, you know, plus or minus 50 to 100 thousandths or so, uh, I think this would be perfect for that, actually. So, there you go. You know, I'm glad to add it to the shop. Well, guys, that's it this week. I was hoping to get the front wall and the back wall out this week, but I ran into so many things that slowed me down externally that it was just impossible to get that back wall out. But this whole demolitions went faster than what I thought it would anyway, so I'm still happy with my progress. So next week we'll take off where we left off, get that back wall out, start removing this pad, you know, and then start formulating a plan to reconstruct this thing. It'll feel good to be done with the demolition. I'm getting, getting pretty tired of chipping mortar and packing blocks, even though, you know, the 
work's really just begun. But, uh, you know, we're making pretty good progress, I think. So That's it. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers. Like I always say, anybody who's supported me on this project, it's definitely much appreciated. Click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. I think that's it. So, Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.